Well, hello, everybody. We've got Alan Pun on the line here with us on our uh, Zoom chat. And Alan, the reason why I thought we should just connect today is I, I noticed in the string, oh, by the way, to introduce Alan uh, properly, he is a financial advisor that specializes in helping realtors all over Vancouver. Good friend of mine, good friend of a lot of you realtors out there. We've known each other for a long time. Uh, Alan is also the preferred financial advisor for Remax City. I'm in the Remax City boardroom right now and also Remax Pro Group. So Alan, welcome. Thank you. I'm going to go get right to the question. And then the hot question that all these realtors want to know is, What's going on with CERB and how can the realtors take advantage of the, uh, of the, of the funds available? Well, hi, Mitch. Thanks for having me on today. This is uh, my first time actually on Zoom. It's a great experience thus far. Let's uh, define that acronym right now, CERB, the Canada Emergency Relief Benefit. So this is something that has come out in addition to the regular EI. So previously, the employment insurance covered a lot of workers who were salaried workers who got laid off and they were available to access the EI benefit. But for those who are self-employed who are not paying employment insurance premiums or simply 100% on commission, such as financial advisors or realtors or maybe even actors and actresses, they didn't have any access to emergency funds while they were not working because of the COVID-19 virus. So someone like myself, whose office is closed, it's very difficult for us to do business. With realtors such as yourself, there's not an ability to do an open house, to do showings in person, and it kind of causes a little ripple effect in the market to slow down in sales. And when that happens, people still have to pay their bills. And when they have a little extra cushion or a little bit of money to help them get through these couple of months with low income or zero income, this is really going to help. Alan, if I may, could we just start at the beginning too? When someone wants to start the application process, I understand there's, it's like a two phase. You need to register, apply to get an access code before you can go in. Is that correct? That's correct. So on Revenue Canada right now, you can apply for your online access. That's the quickest and easiest way for you to self-register for the CERB. So from now on, I'll just rip, uh, use the acronym CERB. Uh, so you go onto the website, if it's your first time, you register on the Revenue Canada website, put in your address, uh, put in all the stuff that you need to verify. One thing it's going to most likely ask you is for your last notice of assessment, it's going to ask you for a random line item, and that's one of the verifications. So it'll say, what did you report on your taxes on line 120? So you enter in that number, it verifies you, it'll send you an email to verify yourself, confirm, then you have an account. Then if you just go to Google and you go Google Canadian Emergency Relief Benefit, it'll bring you to a link that has the uh, Canadian website for that. From there, if you read all the eligibility and you read all the things, there's actually a schedule. So they've segmented the birthdays of Canadians, January, February, and March to April 6th, which is yesterday is the first day you can apply. And then uh, April, May, and June, today is the first day that you can apply. And then the next three months will be tomorrow and then the next three months the following day. So that's not to overload the system with every single self-employed person on one day trying to get an application into there. So that's your first step is to register your online account. If you're unable to do that, uh, you can call the number and you can try to use their self system to register for that. But from most of the feedback, the online system is the best way to do it, unless you don't have access to some of your tax information and you can't verify yourself online, then you'd have to go the route of calling in. Okay. Alan, you did send me a number of the questions that you've received, so I'm going to follow a, a certain level of format. Let's sure. talk about eligibility as well, because there, there seem to be a lot of questions. I saw this in the, in the, in the discussion thread as well, as far as you know, if I sold a, like, for example, I sold a pre-sale in December, we're doing the inspection tomorrow, completion right. will likely be in two weeks. When do I count that money? How does that work towards my income? Okay, so that's a great question. Right now, the current Revenue Canada rules for income for self-employed is when you're paid that income. So this whole program, the application process, everything is brand new. So nobody actually has the right or wrong answer because it's never been tested, nobody's been audited. So all we can go by right now is the exact wording that is on the CERB website, right? So existing CRA rules, currently if you're a realtor, let's back say a month ago and you sold a property but you were not paid on the property, 
until you're paid, you're not taxed in that tax year. So that's the current rule. So in an instance where the realtor has sold a pre-sales, call it April 2017, they sold it then, it's completing this month and they're going to get paid this month. That is income in the 2020 tax year. So for the purpose of the CERB, let's say you sold something in April of this year. You are not getting paid that commission until July. So one of the eligibility rules is that you don't have any income while you're receiving the benefit. So in that specific instance for a realtor, if the brokerage has not paid you personally, you have not earned that income yet. Therefore, you qualify for CERB. And Alan, and I'll speak the way it's done here at Remax City, Remax Pro Group. It's very clear when you get paid and you don't get paid. You get a pay statement. You get that email to you. It either came on that day or it didn't come on that day. So, and again, now you, it's my understanding you can apply Mm -hmm. And not and and basically, if you do get paid in that pay period, you just report that pay, and therefore you are exempt. Is that kind of the way it works? In other words, again, nobody has gone through the entire process yet. It's only two days old, so we can't speak to what the process to opt in or opt out on. But for now, basically, as a beginning start for realtors, you would ask yourself, let's look at my income, and let's look at the website rules. The website rule right now says. From March 15th until April 6th, if you are self-employed and you have not been paid any income for the first 14 consecutive days, you are eligible for the first portion, which is $2,000 for March. Okay. Then in the first week of April, if you still haven't been paid a commission, now you're eligible for $500 for the first week of April. So that's what the rules are then. So then maybe what we're leading to now is, oh, so next week I'm getting paid my commission for something I sold. Now that means I'm ineligible. So I guess we'd have to wait about a week or two until there's actually self-employed individuals who receive an income and then start to self-report that they have an income and see what the process is, how they get ineligible or if the payments stop or if they have to keep reapplying every week or confirm that this week no income and then they get a direct deposit in their account or this week there was an income. So those are answers we, we don't have just yet. So worst case scenario, let's say someone does accidentally or call themselves eligible, get funds, not necessarily be eligible because a check came in or something like that. What, sure. what would be the worst kind of the worst case scenario? Uh, would there be fines? What, what would you believe the scenario would be if you did you know, get funds and you weren't eligible for them? Sure. So let's kind of talk about existing fines and then maybe that can provide a baseline for what this fine would be. So a person who doesn't file their taxes right now, the penalty is 1% per month. If you don't pay the taxes you owe, that's 1% per month. And then the interest rate for argument's sake, let's call it 5%. So then somebody who didn't pay their taxes or file their taxes for an entire year, that would be 24% plus 5%. So hypothetically, if that person became ineligible to receive that $2,000 benefit, they could follow the same rules of you shouldn't have received the benefit. That's a 1% per month penalty. You took the money and it should have been in our accounts and we're going to charge you interest on it. So I would say my best guess would be maybe 12 to uh, 29%. Okay. So be aware, don't over underestimate, be careful, fill out the form properly. Correct. Two more questions and we'll wrap up the video. We may do this again next week. We'll, after we sure. go through a week of this, we may check in again next week we, because I'm sure there'll be some more questions. Um, there was a, a couple of questions with regards to a PREC, people that are uh, personal real estate corporations pay themselves. Um, yes. How is that managed? Do you not pay yourself? Would you, should you keep up the regular payment? What, what would be the best strategy for that, Alan? Okay, so again, if we refer to the rules on the website, is if you have no personal self-employment income or personal income, okay? So the way that the a regular realtor works is they earn a commission, the brokerage pays them the commission directly. That is a personal self-employment income. When you incorporate to become a personal real estate corporation, the brokerage then pays your personal prep. That is a corporate income. Now your prec, if you wanna take money out and pay yourself a dividend or salary, if you take that extra action or that step, that becomes personal self-employment income. So if somebody wanted to qualify based on the rules and the way it's stated right now, if the brokerage paid them any money from March 15th until June 30th, 
and all that money stayed sheltered inside the PREC, they would actually qualify because they technically have zero personal self-employment income. The minute you take money out of the PREC and you pay yourself a salary or a dividend, then that becomes personal income. And then that leads to a really uh, interesting question is, now what happens if I get audited? What's gonna happen there? Well, if you get audited, the most likely scenario is they'll ask your brokerage for all your pay stubs, right? If you're not a PREC realtor, then they'll match up those pay stubs to the benefit periods where you receive the benefit. If they find a crossover that says you actually had a commission that month and you were getting the benefit, that is where the penalties are gonna come. And I think people, CRA will come down harder on those people than somebody who accidentally just took one month's payment and then forgot that there was a commission and then they stopped receiving the benefit. It's somebody who willfully for the full four months is receiving a commission every single month and is trying to take advantage of the benefit. I think CRA would come down harder on those people, whereas the other ones who were not willful and just accidentally took the benefit, I think they're going to be okay on that sense. Right? Okay. Then the follow-up one that many realtors are asking right now is, well, I'm an individual realtor. I'm not a personal real estate corp. I'm a property manager. I collect property management fees every month from the buildings I manage. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the wording again, it says that you don't have any personal self-employment income yeah. or income. So then you have a realtor yesterday who said, well, my property management income is $600 per month. So if I keep taking this income, then I'm actually negative 1400 because if I stop taking this income, then I can take the $2,000 from the benefit. So then that becomes a judgment call on the realtor, whether they want to continue taking property management uh, fees and take less than the benefit, right? Um, and then the other very, very gray area is if you have personal rental income. So there was a question, it was the wife was a realtor and the husband was not a realtor. They own investment property jointly and on their tax returns, they report the uh, rental income, income yeah, rental. right? So if you look at the website and you look at the way it's worded, it's unclear right now. It doesn't state that if you have rental income, that disqualifies you from the CERB. But then I tell people, my personal opinion is, use your common sense, right? The CERB, as it states, is to help those self-employed with zero income. Mm -hmm. It's not to help the self-employed with regular monthly rental income. And here's some extra money, an extra revenue source for you, mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Self-Employed, in addition to it. So if it faces some sort of test or they actually clarify the rental income, I think it's more likely than not that they'll say, if you have regular reported monthly rental income, you'd be disqualified. So the best practice there is if that is your case right now, don't take that income. But if you have a personal real estate corp that owns investment property and that rental income is paid to the personal real estate corporation, technically you still don't have personal income. Personal income in that situation. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, Alan, let's sign off there and uh, we will likely do a follow-up call next week because there will be more questions and I really appreciate it. And once again, Alan Pond, financial advisor, friend to the realtors, specializes in helping realtors. And we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. You did great on the Zoom call here today. And we really appreciate your time helping us all navigate our, our way through these, uh, the uncharted waters of CRB. So thank you very much, Alan. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Mitch. And let's uh, let the listeners know that if they need to reach me, it's 604-788-8000. Uh, I'm very social media friendly. On Instagram, it's financial.insights. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash financial insights. So I'm here pretty much every day to answer any questions you guys might have. So feel free to shoot me a message, add me to Instagram, or give me a call directly, and I'm happy to answer those questions. So we thanks again, Mitch. Yeah, you're welcome. We appreciate your help at REMAX City and REMAX Pro Group as well. Have a great day. You too. Thanks, Mitch.